Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. And we've got a lot going on. Why don't we kind of take a look at what's happening over in that corn table? I just had a little peek, and boy, oh boy, this doesn't look like there's a lot going on, but we're right kind of smack dab in the middle of the day's range, maybe a little bit higher towards the higher end. But uh, we've got that SEP corn market off one and a half cents at 5.53 and a half. December corn, the new crop, off a half cent at 5.56. So we're really kind of hanging around the neighborhood of unchanged here. We'll see what happens for the rest of the day. How about beans, soybeans? You know, a lot of the same over there, right? Um, that August contract, that's uh, was September is really the front month, and that's sharply unchanged. At 13.44 and a quarter, we've got November down one and a half cents at 13.35 and a quarter, and again, uh, a lot like corn. That's kind of right in the middle of the day's trading range there. Let's take a look at Chicago wheat while we're at it. Off about a nickel, we've got September off five cents at 7.14 even. We've got December off four and three quarter cents at 7.28 and a half. Uh, taking a stroll over to the Kansas City. Hard red wheat pit, uh, two cents lower. September's off two cents at 7.03 and three quarters. December's off two cents at 7.15 and a half. And March is also off two and a quarter cents at 7.24 and a half. And then lastly, let's kind of take a look at Minneapolis spring wheat. What do they have for us here? Look at this, one and a half cents lower in September, 9.14 and three quarters. December, a half cent lower at 9.02 and three quarters. And again, March off one and a half cents at 8.90 even. And I'm lucky to be joined today with, uh, well, by Todd Horowitz from Bubba Trading. Todd, uh, we're getting closer and closer to kind of that unchanged neighborhood in some of these things. And, and I reckon that's probably due to the fact that, you know, as we go get closer and closer to when, Thursday morning, that's going to be more of the case. We might have some trade that kind of gets a little bit wonky, and that'll be on low volume and high volatility. What do you think? No, I agree 100%, Scott. I think both, you might see... You know, Wednesday, you might see some, or early Thursday morning, you might see some action of people trying to position themselves, thinking they know what's going to come out and trying to be on the right side. But overall, this is the, the, the dog days of summer, dull trading, very low volume. And, you know, if, you, if anybody watches markets overnight, we saw an amazing flash crash in the metals overnight, which can happen at any market at any time if somebody gets forced out. And that is what we kind of saw so I don't look for much action here. I, I think that they look pretty good. I think overall the markets are pretty solid. But again, it is the dog days of summer with light volume. And we talk about it a lot, and a lot of investors maybe don't know this, or uh, maybe they didn't hear about it. But you know, in August, a, a lot of the world, especially Europe, takes time off, right? So if that's the case, and that happens in the in investment industry as well, a lot of times you won't have the the lead trader on the desk. The boss of the desk won't be there. Or if he is there, maybe the second in command is taking his two weeks off. But a lot of the folks that are normally in the market really aren't there on an average, on, on an everyday basis, which I think also lends to uh, more of this volatility that we see every August. And then on top of it, you've got rumblings in China. You've got a USDA report. You've seen the flash crash we had overnight in the metals. You saw oil off 7% last week and then another 4, 4.5 overnight that, you know, today. Um, we've got a lot happening, but not a lot of people around, and that really lends itself to volatility. Well, that actually creates more of it because, again, there is a lack of participation here. And typically, you know what happens, Scott, and you and I both know this from the floor days, Somebody gets, we call it a tap on the shoulder, and they, they're forced to liquidate. There's no, there's no mercy there. They just, just sell out, and it's just down, down or up it goes, depending on which side they're on. And that's the kind of action we can expect, which is why this time of year, it's always best to be more on the observation deck, unless you need to get something done, versus trying to be an active participant. Exactly right. We're going to use that as a great spot for a break here, Todd. We're going to go away, pay some bills. We'll be right back after this with Market Day Report. Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. Uh, that's Shelley rhymes with Melody. Um, why don't we take a look and use that as a shameless segue into that cattle market. The Cow Guy wants to talk cattle. How about live cattle? Live cattle is, very, is, is quiet. We're off 20 cents in that August contract. Really not happening very much there. 122 spot 80. But let's take a look at October. That's down 65 cents at 127 spot 22. And December off 80 cents at 132 spot 52. How about the feeders? Uh, what do they look like today? The feeder table brought to us by Bar Chart. Um, let's take, well, August is off a buck five at 158.80. We've got September now down 32, well, 25 cents. Just changed. Down 25 cents in the September at 163.07. And October's also down 
a quarter at 165 spot 52. And here's where the damage has been done in lean hogs. We still have that October contract down limit, $3 at 84 spot 60. And we've got the D's contract behind it. It's not quite limit yet, $2.90 lower at 78 spot 85. Uh, we've still got Todd Horowitz joined, still with us from Las Vegas on Skype. Todd, um, what's happening? What do you reckon is happening in, in lean hogs and for that matter over in the, in the cattle as well? Well, I think well, if you look at the hog market first, I mean, you know, listen, they've kind of trained, changed trend, and we're starting to see some selling, which is not totally unusual, you know, going into October and into December. As we know, prices are normally lower there anyways, and they usually pick up, uh, you know, in February. Now, interestingly enough, we're not seeing some that great action going out in the next year, which is a little bit of a concern. Uh, but, you know, the trend is pretty negative right now in the hog market, was positive, and has turned back to the negative side. I think that's what you can expect. But again, I warn you, it's very slow and it's very it's very challenging. And it, should they be down limit today? That I don't know. There's not enough volume to really decipher. And, and cattle is just kind of hovering in a very tight range of consolidation, up a buck, down a buck. And I think you're going to see higher prices there. And again, I think even hogs could participate. You know, again, this is going to depend on we've got football season opening, which is a lot of stadiums, a lot of people going to be out eating a lot of food. So I think we could see. Uh, some some spike in prices once we can kind of get through this mass thing and the other mandates that we have and football season opens because it's a lot of stadiums and a lot of people. So we'll see what happens. So I, if I could sum it up for you, I think what I just heard from you is, hey, you know what? This is that time of year. Don't read too much into these day to day movements. You want to take a, a bigger picture point of view. I think that's what you kind of mean there. But I, and I would absolutely 100 percent agree with you, because sometimes these day to day movements can kind of be static or white noise that you don't want to get too caught up in. But I really appreciate you coming on, Todd. Always great stuff from Las Vegas. That's Todd Horowitz from Bubba Trading. Uh, we're going to take this opportunity to hand it back over to Tammy.